Let's go next to Steve from Seattle. Steve from Seattle, welcome to the program. What's on your mind today, sir? David, it's great to be with you. Likewise. You know, I'm watching your your stuff here on the Project 2025, mm -hmm. and it's pretty scary. Yeah, absolutely. What's um, have you been on to the Project 2025.com website? I have and seen the questionnaire that that is <laughs> no. the I, I guess the template of the recruitment of of who they're looking for. No, it's, it's, I have uh, not seen that. Um, you I can let's see. Submit your I would application. Everybody. This yes, seems it, pretty nuts. It is, and uh, I would just kind of recommend that you know folks take a good hard look at that. It's it's <laughs> something that you know I'm, I'm kind of a fence sitter right now. I'm I'm waiting to see who actually I guess gets nominated and what happens here in the next few months and. That's that's the one thing I think that really more than anything else that America needs to be and the whole world is really concerned about. But and, explain uh, to me, Steve, what you mean that you're a fence sitter and you want to see who the nominees are. Who are you thinking of voting for? Who might you vote for? You know, more than likely, more than likely, it'll be Mr. Biden. OK, um, definitely, definitely not Trump. But, uh -huh. you know, there, there's still rumors going around that Michelle Obama might jump into the the race, you know, Michelle here. Obama has said unequivocally she will not run. Yes, indeed. Of, of course, that would be Mike Obama. According to Fox News, you know how they do it over there with the uh, <laughs> the taunting and the. Uh, the twisting of the stories. OK, yeah. So but so it sounds like if it sounds like you'll vote Biden, but if someone replaces Biden, you might vote for that person. I, I would prefer somebody else, maybe a little younger, a little more pro progressive got in there. But, All you know, right. I know yeah, how same here. the incumbency see, I've, I've I've actually written in Ross Perot every every chance I've gotten. So, hmm. it's, uh, well, I guess voting in Washington, it wouldn't make a big difference. Not much. You know, not much, my no. friends up in northern Idaho, they're a little different with with that being so red at 72 to 73 percent. Right. You know, that that vote almost is a wash as well. So, yep. which is where well, I listen, up. Steve, let's do let's actually go next to Idaho to Idaho. I really appreciate your call. We're going to go next to straws in Idaho. Since it was mentioned, I feel like I should go there. Straws, what's on your mind in Idaho today? Hey, David, how's it going? Um, it's going well. I was just um, thinking about the you know, this unitary executive stuff that they're talking about with like the project 25. Yes. But, but okay. And then in the Supreme court, if the Supreme court lets them kind of get away with this, wouldn't that diminish their power? Like the Supreme court, wouldn't they, they won't need the Supreme court anymore. And, and I'm, I'm just, so let's an, explain what you're I'm talking about straws. Let's explain what you're talking about. Okay. So, Unitary executive theory is the idea that the president can control the entire executive branch. And it comes from article to an interpretation of Article two. It is this whole idea that says the president controls executive functions. There's limited checks and balances. They say they have a historical basis for it. It's very much not accepted uh, in any serious way, but it does align with the kind of autocratic ideas of, of Trump. Listen, here's the thing. There's all these hypotheticals, right? If Trump takes over and he's a one day dictator and he does this or he does that, or if Trump tries to steal, stay in office again, or if Trump gets in and he hot fires 50 percent of the federal workers and replaces them with loyalists, or if Trump gets in and they execute unitary executive theory, we need to be concerned. So sometimes I think we miss the forest for the trees. Everything you're saying is a concern. But the big picture of all of it points back to the exact same thing. Trump's a danger to democracy and must be defeated. I don't necessarily know that we convince more people by going narrow and saying they want to push unitary executive theory to Project 2025. Yes, that that's absolutely true. But the big picture is these people are anti-democracy. They're authoritarian wannabe dictators. And we must prevent Trump from getting into the Oval Office. That's the big picture. We don't want to lose sight of that. Right. The way I was thinking is just like they would, they wouldn't. 
the Supreme Court, like, they want to maintain their power. Like, wouldn't they, I don't know if they would want to allow so much of, not only the unitary executive thing, but all of these things, like, if they let them keep doing this, they, they won't need a Supreme Court anymore. Right. You're, I think what you're saying is, why would the Supreme Court reinforce these autocratic ideas because they put themselves out of jobs. Essentially, it sounds like what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's a fair point. I just think, again, the bigger picture is uh, where we where we should be focusing. I don't know how Supreme Court justices will. The Supreme Court justice, the Supreme Court is not going to make itself irrelevant in the next presidential term, no matter what happens. So so I don't think that that's really where I would focus. Yeah. Okay. I was just thinking about it, but I appreciate you taking my call. All right. Straws from Idaho. Great to hear from you. Thank you very much. Let's go to Rodney from St. Louis. Rodney, welcome to the program. What's on your mind today? Rodney from St. Louis, welcome to the show. Please accept my invitation. And last chance for Rodney from St. Louis. No go. That is truly a shame. Let's go to Jack from Warsaw. I believe it is Jack from Warsaw, Poland. Hello. Welcome can you hear me well? Yes, I can. Hi, David. Awesome. Awesome. Sorry for my English and my rugged voice. You're doing um, great. Right. So the thing I wanted to bring into your attention is uh, something I noticed about the entirety of left leaning media in the U.S. I'm an okay. outside observer, um, just an outside perspective here, um, which is when you try to make a point that Trump is a danger to democracy, mm -hmm. you bring out those sound bites where he said that he's going to, uh, you know, uh, Stop. I can't remember exactly what, what it said, like suspend the Constitution or that he wants to be a dictator for a day. Now, for your side, uh, for people who are already against Trump, this sounds like good enough reason. Mm -hmm. uh, for re Republicans are not going to buy it. And many undecideds, I think, are also not going to buy it because they kind of they're. they're um, how do I call it? they are OK with giving Trump the benefit of the doubt that maybe he was just joking. And the point that I want to make is that there is, I think, um, a much better way to make the case that Trump is a danger to democracy. Tell me. By... Yes. Yeah, yeah. Tell me what that is. OK. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Um, and I think the perspective should be, hey, look at what Trump is saying that the left, quote unquote, or Biden, quote unquote, or the Democrats, quote unquote, are doing to him. He is saying that they are politically persecuting him. He's saying that uh, they're destroying democracy. They're... All of those things that he is saying that the left is doing to him. And he also makes a point that he's going to do the same, that he feels justified in doing the same to the left. And right. I believe this is much clearer indication of what kind of danger to democracy he is. He is basically twisting the entire reality into a vision of like, you know, being Navalny oppressed by Putin. Um, and then he's saying that when I'm going to be Putin, I'm going to do the same that Putin did to me. <laughs> kind of. I understand the uh, point you're making, Jack. You know, for me, it's really an all of the above. I mean, listen. It, it is absolutely the case that Trump is already pre justifying some of the things that he will try to do by saying they're doing it to me. So it would be fair for me to do it to them. Trump is also threatening to target media outlets that he doesn't like, which is an absolute democratic nightmare. Trump is also saying that he is going to deploy the Justice Department against his political opponents. Trump is also saying I will be dictator for a day. Trump is also playing coy with all of the global dictators that he likes while criticizing allies. I don't see. Here's the thing. I don't think, Jack, that there's the one thing that will really change people's minds. First of all, a huge swath of people aren't going to have their minds changed no matter what is said to them. So, so they're unreachable. So for a lot of these people, it's like there's no one thing. There's no 10 things with all of this other stuff. We never know in advance 
what is the most effective thing that if people knew they would then change their mind. So we need to take an all of the above approach. I think what you're pointing out makes a lot of sense. And I think I think some of the other things make a lot of sense. So I, I would take an all of the above approach for sure. And that's perfectly fine. And I wish the left leaning media would take the all of the above approach, as you say. Mm. But what I hear as I'm you know, listening to to these debates and 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 uh, and all the stuff that uh, that appears on YouTube, basically, um, is that there is this strong focus on those dictator for a day, dictator for a day. Yeah. Um, and, and remember, not part of that is part of that to, focus yeah. is because he said that more recently. You know, now we're already moving on to other things. It, I, I don't share the concerns you have, I think, is where I'm coming down. OK, OK, I wish it, it would be revisited uh, to make a list of all the things that Trump said he's going to do because they're doing to him and demolish his claim that these things are being done to him. Um, just to remind maybe people who just started following left leaning media yeah. uh, recently that no, in fact, what Trump is saying that is being done to him is BS and uh, and what he threatens back is actually dangerous. All right. Well, point taken, Jack from Warsaw, Poland. Great to hear from you.